The car companies are laying people off because they're going to electric vehicles. The banks are laying people off because they're just doing some housekeeping. Santa Claus is also laying off a few elves because the freight volumes are lower this year too. Why do people believe the narrative they're told just because they're given an excuse? Read between the lines, look deeper into the issues, peel back the layers, and unveil reality. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about what's happening in the financial industry industry as well as what's going on in the economy in general. I'm going to talk about 75,000 plus bank jobs being cut in 2019 alone so far. We're going to look at what's going on with the car companies as well. That's something I want to talk about. And of course, look at what's happening underlying all of this. At this time right now, we have the Federal Reserve intervening in the markets every single day. This is out of the Wall Street Journal. Fed adds 72 point eight billion dollars to the markets just as they always do friday's trading session but look at the more important fact here they have expanded their balance sheet to over four trillion dollars and we saw how ridiculously fast they accelerated it it is unbelievable because it's faster than qe1 2 and 3 all of them and if you don't think it's qe then what in the world are we really looking at are we looking looking at the facts or are we simply looking at conjecture now i'm going to go into the details of what has happened here to the economy because we see the stock market we see the bond market that's one thing that's what the federal reserve is doing that's what they're manipulating but what about the actual economy well it is quite different Banking unions in Italy have asked the government to prevent implementation of the 8,000 job cuts planned by the country's biggest lender, Unicredit. This is just one of the banks that have decided to axe some workers. And we're looking at not just a few, but this happens to be one bank. Now, I get reports all the time coming in from all different sources, including my subscribers. And I want to thank each and every one of you for always making me aware of what's happening. Thank Thank you very much i think this is one that one of the subscribers was telling me about because there's in fact so many there's no shortage of this type of information that's for sure now this happens to be nine percent of this particular bank's workforce that is significant considering the fact that this is apparently the best economy ever even in europe we have seen the stocks how they have risen somewhat since their low point at the beginning of the year and there should be no reason to have to lay any but lay off anybody at this moment and yet they all seem to be doing it now from bloomberg the biggest cuts 10 biggest banks make up the vast majority of the announced job cuts in Europe. And of course, we had Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank apparently going to lay off 18,000 people. They already did get rid of quite a few thousand, but their plan is to get rid of 18,000. Unicredit, of course, in second place, if you want to call it that here, 8,000 people. And of course, all the other names that you've heard of, Santander, Commerce Bank, HSBC, and so on. HSBC actually I had heard uh, as many as 10,000 plus, but that's all rumor at this point. So we'll see what happens uh, as the year goes on. It's almost done here into 2020. Looks like being in the financial industry probably isn't a good idea at this time, simply because of what's coming. We have a lot of automation happening. We have robo advisors and we have tellers being replaced. I mean, it's on all levels, it looks like. Global bank job calls top 75,000, and they're referencing Unicredit, obviously, as being one of those. This just shows you what's going on at this time globally, not just in Europe, but of course, on a global scale. Now, it's important to note here what they suggest, where negative interest rates in Europe and a slowing economy force lenders to slash costs. This is arguable, of course, although... I, of course, I do agree with it. But why in the world have we engaged in such reckless policies and yet we are still pushing the narrative that things are okay? If you have a crisis, that's fine. You deal with the crisis, okay? I don't agree with the way that they do so, but at least you deal with the crisis. And then once it's finished, you shouldn't need any of these support mechanisms. You shouldn't need the stimulus where they're putting it. You shouldn't need to create these ridiculous, 
ridiculous policies that they've put in place on all levels. Negative interest rates, are you kidding me? Look at the failure that Japan is, and here we are today around the world pushing that same business. Big mistake as far as I am concerned. Now looking at this, you could see in the pie chart the breakdown, 63,000 of those are in Europe. So the vast majority at this time being in Europe, however, North America also over 6,000. That is a significant amount as well. European banks have disclosed the higher number of targeted job cuts. I want to see where this goes actually because 2020 could in fact be the year where they cut a lot more. And again, we're not even supposedly in a crisis and they are cutting a significant amount. Look, even North America, 6,000 jobs in this industry at a time in which we are being told this is the best time ever. That's really strange as far as I'm concerned. Head Start U.S. bank staff levels stabilized after the 2008 crisis while Europe bled. And the comparison here, the white line is the European banks and the blue is U.S. And you can just see the difference. They're just showing you how these two compare. If you want to see all the numbers and the dates and everything, you can see that for yourself if you pause the video. Looking at this, it's just more information, talking about Unicredit, talking about the banks, but there's some more points I wanted to note. At the very bottom of this page, they had something hilarious to mention, which I wanted to just quickly touch on. It isn't all gloom though, as firms seek to add jobs to update their technology and improve compliance. Now this here, updating technology, usually, usually depends on what they are doing. It is heavily, heavily connected to Robo advisors. Robo advisors is extremely important these days. I've noticed that basically all financial companies have talked about this. The robo advisor is something that they are striving for. They're really trying to push for it. And ultimately, it's an easy change for these companies to do in the long term. It's just trying to get the customers involved in it, trying to get them to accept it. That's the only difference. When you go into a bank, largely what happens is that you go to speak to the financial advisor, they click three or four buttons asking you two or three questions and you are basically put into the same funds everybody else is anyway i was once told by a financial advisor many years ago what my risk tolerance was and while i sat there pondering he suggested it doesn't really matter anyway and click the button for me now that shows you that you can simply do the exact same thing on your end you pull up the app or you pull up their website you click three or four buttons and that's it you're invested now this is quite an embarrassment as part of you know we we're supposed to be trusting these individuals with our money and of course that's uh something that you have to judge on your own i won't say any more Bank failure in New Jersey is nation's third in a week. And the only reason I mention this, it's a very small bank, but because we always have this happen, there are always banks failing. And of course, what usually occurs in the financial industry in general is that they are taking pieces of you get this asset and you get those assets and we're going to take your trading guys and you're going to take the back office and we're going to fire this group of people. We don't want them. And simply picking and choosing which parts will go to which companies and of course generally there is no losses as far as depositors are concerned okay that's that's what happens this is simply a matter of a process that occurs on a fairly regular basis more often than you would know this is just showing you that internally despite all of the games that they've played with fractional reserve banking banks can still fail banks can still have problems they are rotting at the core and this is exactly why they go into these derivatives and other dangerous financial casino gambling they get themselves into. Then we move into the auto industry. I got two things to cover here. This first one, Mercedes, Benz, and Audi announced plans to shed roughly 20,000 jobs in a grim week for brands that helped define automotive performance for decades. This is big, okay? We're talking about 20,000 jobs in this particular industry. And why? Well, of course, electric vehicles. Electric vehicles is the reason why they've laid off 20,000 people. If that makes any sense to you, well then, that makes one of us. Basically what they're saying is that these electric vehicles have fewer parts and therefore we need fewer workers. That's fine and dandy, but right now, as it stands, electric vehicles are an extremely 
small percentage of the total. Why in the world are you getting rid of this many people, a fairly large percentage of these companies? Why are you getting rid of them? Why are you closing down plants? If we're talking about something that is slowly but surely being adopted. It's not as if everybody's new car is an electric. We're not seeing that right now. And yet that's the way that they're telling us. No, no, the economy isn't doing well. If you had seen the articles that I talked about so many times before, where these cars are being piled up in lots all over the place, we are seeing these endless lots of vehicles sitting there. And why? It's because they don't want to stop production because then you're going to have to lay the people off. You're going to have to reduce the prices. You're going to have a big problem. But apparently, if you just buy up a whole bunch of vehicles and pray someone's eventually going to buy them, well, then everything is just fine. Sounds like a gamble to me, but I, what do I know anyway? Looking at this. This is only the beginning. We're going to see much more of such savings, that's what they call it, savings rounds in the next decade as the industry faces deep transformation. Across the auto sector in Germany, including local operations of foreign manufacturers, about 150,000 jobs might be at risk in the coming year. That right there is a worry because that's a big number. Even though there are so many people that are employed in this industry, industry, in the auto industry, there's no doubt about it that that is very significant. We've already now had such a large number. I can't even remember what I had quoted on a video I'd done a little while back of all the job cuts in the auto industry. I had totaled that up, but this right here is probably very likely to occur. At the bottom here, the latest plans by Daimler and Audi mean that this will total 100,000 industrial jobs have been announced. The latest plan plans by Daimler and Audi means cuts of more than 100,000 industrial jobs have been announced this year in Germany, which narrowly avoided stumbling into a recession in the third quarter. That's a big number, and I think we should definitely be focusing on it. 7,700 people have lost their jobs so far this year in a media landslide. Gives you a breakdown in this Business Insider article, but I'm just showing you that this is all different types of industries. Yes, I can show you about the store closures and people will point to the fact that, well, you know, everybody's buying things on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon being 5% of the total retail sales in the United States, but I understand that's the reason why. That's fine. That's great. I show you the auto sector and then we have to mention the fact that well, it's because they're going to electric. I'm not buying that either. This happens to be media. I've shown you different industries. Believe what you want, but the stock market and the economy, they're very, very different. They keep quoting this ridiculous number. I mean, it's an embarrassment. Every time I see this, it is so ridiculous. And it's basically like getting spit in the face. The unemployment rate currently, right now, as it stands, as the BLS likes to report, the U3 number, okay? Remember that when we say unemployment, we're talking about the U3 number. That is, as of December 6th here, we're looking at 3.5%. 3.5% we could see since the financial crisis it has moved down and down and down. It's been great, hasn't it, right? Because you would think that this is a good sign of a healthy economy, and of course that is. However, during this period of time, we have seen an increase in the amount of people working two and three jobs. And that shows you that there is a deep need for people to work more hours. Now, does that skew the statistics? Well, of course it does. And you have a lot of individuals who are actually technically below below the poverty line, but they don't show up on those statistics. And why is that? Well, they can't actually make ends meet. They're working those two and three jobs, still can't pay for everything. They're heavily in debt, but technically they're employed. So everything is all good. Now that U3 unemployment rate is something that should be ignored. I see it being quoted all the time in the comments section and uh, I feel nothing but pity. Looking at this next one really quickly, is the Euro banks. Now this is the stock index, the Euro stocks, 600 banks, showing you what has happened. Basically the level they're at right now is certainly not the lowest it's ever been, but it's not much better than where we've seen it. I mean, come on, if you see what the numbers are at, I'm try to you know zoom in a little bit on this. Basically where we're at here looks like something like, let's say 120 or so. We were back at that level in the 90s. In the 90s, okay, we had this skyrocket 
rocket up to a high of 534. And this was leading up to the financial crisis. Afterwards, it dropped down significantly. And since then, we've been trading in this range here. Now that just shows you how an industry can stay battered for so long. And people don't get that. They think that, okay, well, back in 2008, stocks crashed. All right. And that was a perfect time to buy right at this moment right here, right at 666 on the S&P 500. And then wham, I'm going to be rich. Well, you have to choose wisely because things don't always end up the way that you think. It's not going to be the same repeated pattern over and over again. You have to be smart with your investments. Please, my goodness. I see people taking major risk and that is never going to end well. If you want to keep an eye on what's happening, you can check out dailyjobcuts.com. I really like this site, something that I pay attention to often. If you want to support me, hit the thumbs up button on the way out. You really have no idea how much that helps. If you want the best e-course that is available on Amazon that's actually free, well then this is it, okay? It teaches you step-by-step -step how to sell on Amazon, the amazongps.com. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. I talk about the foundation, the history, the asset classes. I actually get into reducing your expenses, self-sufficiency, so much more. Check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook. That's available at themoneygps.com. Wait a second, don't go anywhere. Have you seen this video? If not, click on it. I'll see you there.